Hello, Better Pickleball community. I think I'm a minute early for the two o'clock live stream, but you'll forgive me. We're starting it a little early. We're here talking pickleball. We're getting ready for the Pickleball Summit. And because of that, you, you probably recognize this guy next to me because he's all over YouTube without, usually doesn't have the headset on. I'd like you to welcome Tony from Into Pickle. How are you doing today, Tony? CJ, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. Here in Tampa, five o'clock my time. How are you doing? I'm doing outstanding. It's still pretty awesome. early out here. It's like two o'clock. And you have three more hours of production than I do today. I'm like, what? I got so much stuff to do. I'm like, transfer me to California. Give me three more hours to get this video done that I've been trying to do all day. I hear you. I hear you. And uh, I want to say welcome to everybody here. A special shout out to today. We've got some help. Dale and uh, Christy are helping us in the chat. Uh, which is getting growing bigger and bigger and bigger. So thank you to the two of them. And I'm just going to say hello. Let's see. We got a few people calling. Okay. I love this one because Mario, you still have to tell me if I'm saying this wrong. I gave it a try yesterday. Mario is from Mississauga, Ontario. Did I say that? correctly. You, you have to give me like a thumbs up or let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to continue to say that way and I'm going to absolutely butcher it. <laughs> CJ, can I ask Mario also, what's message retracted? I, I Now I want to know what that message is. I'm like, message retracted. I'm like, what is, what, why? What do you want to tell us? You got really good eyes. If you're, my, my, my scene is just too far away. I have a huge screen. My screen is too much. So. <laughs> Well, we're here and we're talking pickleball and we're going to help you with three things today. Uh, I know that everybody is kind of going a little crazy because of the time that they are not able to spend on the pickleball court. And uh, so we're going to have Tony here. We're going to pick his brain. He does some great things in into pickle. We're going to pick his brain about things that you can do when you're off the pickleball courts. Uh, we're also going to tell you about the pickleball summit that we have coming up starting tomorrow. I can't believe it's tomorrow already. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm glad I have those three extra hours in the day. Let me tell you that. And uh, then we're going to answer your questions. So as I said, we've got Dale and Christy are helping in the uh, section. So if you do have questions, you can put those in at any time. But what I'd like you to do is put the word question in front of your question so that they know it's a question so that I can get it over to Tony. All right. So Tony, before we get started, just in case there's just like this small percentage of people who maybe don't know who you are or what into pickle is tell us please you got it cj all right so um uh you know i've been uh and there's more than just a small percentage there's a lot of people but hopefully we'll read some of them we'll see um basically uh, uh jill my wife and i uh, were tennis players uh i played league tennis uh so you know usda league tennis and uh, I met Jill on a team playing mixed doubles and, you know, we, we started dating. I, I don't, yeah, actually we, we were married. I think we were married before we got to pickleball. And then a good friend of ours, uh, Charlotte, uh, invited us to play pickleball. And I'm like, okay, what's pickleball, whatever. Saturday, we're going to go, we're going to go bat the ball. I thought it was like Kadima or something like that. You know, you just go bat the ball around with the old people and whatever. It's fine. You know, I have, I know I have lunch, you know, that's it. And I was fortunate though. And this is super important, I think. I was fortunate because there was a, um, a gentleman named Steve Talner, who's a, a tennis and a pickleball instructor uh, in the courts we were at in Clearwater. And he happened to be out that morning and he just put a whooping on me. And so I was like, what is going on here? You know what I mean? I don't know what's happening. I'm playing with a plastic ball, a little paddle. I don't know what's going on. I'm just getting my butt kicked. So I started going, I'm, I'm, I'm self-employed. So I have flexibility. So I started going to the rec centers here and, uh, a lot of people are surprised about that, that like, you know, we live in Florida, but Clearwater and Tampa, we've gotten more outdoor courts, but believe it or not, Clearwater and Tampa is an indoor pickleball community, which is surprising to a lot of people. So I started going to the rec centers and, you know, learning it. And uh, I met uh, Tom DiCaprio, uh, who's a friend of mine, and, and uh, we met there and you know, we're about the same age and he was getting into it too. And we just like, we were playing singles or whatever. So we played the 2016 US Open. Uh, we did, I don't know if you remember that year, they had a qualifier, which was like on Friday. So Friday you went in and you played whoever. So, so not whoever, you'll see in a second. So Tom and I were like, oh, what the hell, let's sign up for it. So we signed up for, for pro open, whatever open. And uh, we get there Friday morning, eight o'clock in the morning, court 10 in the East Naples Community Center. And who is it? It's Dan Moore and Wes Caperson. And I'm like, oh, because I'd seen him on YouTube. And I'm like, 
oh, this is going to be fun. And I'm like, and they just put a wallop on us. I still have a video. Uh, Jill filmed it from the, this was before any of my filming stuff. So it was just kind of like she had the iPhone and she was filming it real quick. And uh, I still have the, the one point that, that well, the more one point, but there was one point where I went up against Dan and we were, I was slamming balls at him and they kept on coming back. And I'm like, nobody ever hits these back, you know? And then finally, like the fourth time I win the point and I'm like, <laughs> still have it on my phone. I'm like, yeah, I got one point off Dan Moore. So, uh, but it was a lot of fun. And that was the hook to me. That was the hook. Running into Steve. Well, getting invited first, obviously, then running into Steve was critical because it, it, uh, it um, you know, it showed me what pickleball could be. I think if I had gone out there and just kind of batted the ball around or whatever, I'm not sure what would have happened, you know, but running into Steve, I think was really important. Uh, and then Jill, I, I started playing pickleball pretty much full time from 16 on. I hadn't picked up a tennis racket, even though I played for 40 years since I was a kid. Um, and Jill gave up tennis probably a few months after that, you know, after I got into it heavy. And then we were playing, playing, playing. We traveled. We started our being. Um, we would travel to tournaments. We played Beer City. We played uh, the one in Pittsburgh, the Power, uh, power Games. We, you know, we just played tournament Rochester. We played a whole bunch of tournaments. And um, in 18, we were up in, um, I can't remember anymore, but I think we were up in Maine, I think. And Jill says, why don't you, like, get more serious about it? Because I had always, like, when I played, I always tried to help folks. You know, I'd be on the court. I'd ask, you know, hey, do you mind if I give you a suggestion? I'd give a suggestion. It wasn't, you know, certified or anything. And uh, Jill says, why don't you um, get more serious about it? And I noticed the IPTPA had a certification in uh, Cape Cod, uh, Arlene Petrunix, Tanker Woods, Smash Bee Pickleball. Shout out to you guys if anybody's on there. Um, so I went up, I went, we went, we changed our route and went there for a week. And uh, I got to get, do my training there with, I think Riff was there, uh, Z and Ken Henderson were doing it for the IPTPA. I got certified. And shortly thereafter, I started into pickle. I thought there was some really good video material. And I, I still like a lot of the video material out there. I did a, a, a segment on it uh, Friday, uh, kind of outlining what I thought was then. See, just, you know, your, your videos were some of the videos that I watched back in the day when I was just, you know, I don't know what to do. So I'm watching Joe Baker. I'm watching you. I'm watching Mark. I'm watching Sarah. I'm watching Deb, you know, Pickleball Channel. I'm just watching everything I can do. But I said, you know, there might be like an area there that, that I can help, you know, that I can offer some, some help. So we started into pickle. Uh, and the name is what it sounds like, you know, into pickle, are you into pickleball or into pickle? So that's the idea. And that's it. And then we started making videos. I didn't know what I was doing. If you watch my old videos, they're awful. Some of them are just got awful. Uh, but, you know, they're still on there because they still have some value to them. If I ever read them, I'll take them off. But anyway, so that's it. So that's kind of the long winded story of how into pickle came to be. Well, and I think you make some awesome, awesome content. I, I enjoy watching the things that come out on your channel. And we were talking about this the other day. I think that's one of the things that in talking both with Tony and Barrett, and um, I probably know Nicole and Jordan the longest. I mean, I, I because they're relatively close by, Jordan and I met at a tournament back kind of in, I, I think it was one of both of our first tournaments uh, a while back. Uh, but I think what really is unique in this space is um, everybody's a little different and everybody, because everybody learns differently. So everybody teaches just a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. And that uh, puts out some great information for people. And Tony and I were talking about this and, and, and it, we learn very differently. <laughs> And, and um, so I'm always fast, I'm fascinated when I, with these conversations that he and I have had in just because it's such a different experience for me and it really makes me think about it differently and you make me a better teacher. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. My pleasure, CJ. And thank you for everything you do. Okay, so I'm gonna throw a hardball at you. Oh no! <laughs> right away. Come so on, after, right away. After, yeah, after I, after I, I should have told you this question was coming because somebody asked this question yesterday after the live stream ended, and I promised them that we would answer it. Now I didn't know if you were gonna have the ability to answer this because I wasn't sure you played much indoor pickleball, and you may or may not. Um, his question. We, we were talking about the this paddle yesterday. question. It wasn't actually paddle. It was balls. It was about the balls because uh, now we use a different ball here indoors. And the reason we use the ball is because of the floor. We've tried multiple balls. And if you play with something as hard as a Duro on the floor that we're on, all it does is skip. It, it's not a real mm -hmm. fun ball to play with inside. Uh, but he said they are playing on concrete. So I'm wondering which it could maybe be. Um, like a, polished concrete, you think? Like polished? I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking ice rink. If they're playing indoors, I'm thinking right. like like a hockey rink, possibly. Mm -hmm. Any ideas? 
Well, here's okay. I'm gonna give you all right. I, I go. You ask me whatever you want. I got. I'll talk about whatever, whether I know it or not. I'm in. Um, whatever question you want to throw. So I'm gonna tell you a funny story. So the we were being the not the last whatever in 17, I think we went to Maine and we played a regional USAPA sanctioned regional tournament, right? Indoor on tennis courts. Okay. Uh, jugs ball. And I was like, I, I don't think we're supposed to be using a jugs ball on a tennis court surface. But so that's why like in my materials, I try and clarify. I'm like, just cause you're under a roof doesn't mean it's an indoor surface. Because in theory, if you think about it, you could be outdoors, particularly as the game goes international, right? Uh, think about like, I don't know if you've seen, I'm sure you have, but on, on Facebook, I, I'm fascinated by this work uh, because I think that's one of the beauties of pickleball. And I know I'm digressing a little bit, but like, you know, the, the fact that in India, they're playing this on, um, on tile, like outdoor tile, like just stone tile. And there you see, they set up the net and they mark it off and let us rock and roll. And I'm like, and in China, you see them playing like in conference centers on kind of what you're talking about, like polished concrete, which is beautiful. Um, and so, um, so, you know, the indoor outdoor thing, I think it's confusing for people. I think it's right. It's surface driven. So I, I would say that if it's a gym floor or con polished concrete, I would treat them the same. I agree with, I, I don't know if this is what you were positing, but I would agree that durables, uh, I'm not sure, Franklin X40, stuff like that, I think would skid too much on those surfaces. I think you need to stick to either an in, a truly indoor ball. I think you can play with the, um, the old Onyx twos. Uh, Onyx Pure Twos, not Fuse Twos, but the Pure Twos, um, and you can probably even use the Pen Forties indoors some because they have some rubber in them, you know. So I think you need a little bit of rubber to grip the the, the wood or the polished concrete. I don't, I wouldn't play indoor on it with a Dura or with a Frank. Okay, I, I and you know what? And I think Tony brings up the great point. I, I I think it's two things when you are talking indoor balls. It's not only the type of ball for your surface, which is really important. I think you kind of have to play around with that. I also think it's color. Um, our mm. the the gym floor we play on has a very like light blonde color to the floor, and like most gym floors, right? They have a gazillion lines on them. Is a gazillion a word? But it is gazillion now. is definitely a word. 100%. A gazillion, a gazillion. Yeah. So they have a gazillion lines on them, right? And it's pretty hard to see. But the other thing that's interesting in, in the courts, are we have a the white, you know, typical gym background, right? The white solid concrete block background. Mm -hmm. But behind two of the courts, there's the green padded. Um, yeah, the, the matting or whatever. Like matting yeah. that's up against the walls, right? And it's a very dark green. So the balls that work that you can see the best on the middle court, you can't see on the courts that you would play on that have the dark green padding. So we actually have, when we play inside, we have a couple of different balls based on which court you're playing because it's, they're just easier to pick up. They're just easier to see. Um, so. Yeah, that's, that's a real problem. And also lighting sometimes indoors where you get those I mean, I think it's beautiful to have the, the natural light coming in, but sometimes you get those weird angles of light and it's super hard to see. I, uh, there's a friend of mine who plays, I've never played up there, but it's about an hour north of us on these indoor courts that have these awesome burgundy mats, like the green mats you're describing, but they're like burgundy. And so, yeah, you can pick up the ball awesome on those courts. But yeah, the, the difference in color sometimes is super difficult, uh, you know, and that, and that parquet, that kind of blonde parquet flooring is so hard to pick up the ball sometimes. It's, it's really hard. Hey, so I was going to say this, you know what, um, if you would, please um, put in the chat, if you, especially if you're playing on concrete, would you put in the chat what ball you're using and whether or not you like it? And we'll make sure that uh, Dale or Christy get that message to the two of us, because we'd like to, neither of us play on that surface. And I, and I think what we've said is it's surface driven, it's light driven, it's, you know, that whole bit. So I think there could possibly be a lot of different answers. I will tell you this, there are certain balls and I don't want to call out balls, but there's certain balls that just are unplayable indoor, like basically like, and there's some, there's some players that actually will not play tournaments that have that ball because you cannot put the ball away. And so if you can't put the ball away, just your shoulder just gets exhausted. So at some point you got to finish the point, right? And if you can't finish the point, what's the point? The great ball debate. <laughs> mm, rages on <laughs> oh um anyway <laughs> we have no one at the summit that's going to be talking about specific balls i'm sure it's going to come up but um can i make it can i make a shout out real quick anybody who's watching my section you want to ask about balls 
I'll get in there. I'll answer about balls. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, listen, I, my view, my view, CJ, I know you're the same way I am, which is this. I want to tell you guys information that's useful. I'm not, I'm not like trying to hawk a ball or hawk a paddle or whatever. I'm going to tell you guys what I think. Maybe I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm going to tell you what I think. Hopefully it's helpful. Yeah. And, and you know what? I, I do agree with, I, yeah, like I, I have opinions about that as well. Um, but yes, you're right. It's, it, it's important that we share with each other. Um, so anyway, um, I lost my train of thought. Okay, I was talking about the summit, right? Let me give you some information on the summit. So uh, a little earlier, I posted a summit registration. If you don't already have that, go ahead and get registered for the summit and you get an agenda so that you know when everybody is going to be on because the summit starts tomorrow. It goes Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, the 23rd, the 24th, and the 25th. We're gonna be on live right here on YouTube from 12 until 2.30. Pacific time. And we have somewhere between three and four speakers daily, each and every day. They're going to be on and they're going to give you some things that you can do when you're away from the court. And then they have so graciously offered to answer your questions. So there'll be a Q&A session after that. So please make sure that you get registered and that you join us. And I know some of you can't make it live. Um, the links that you get will be uh, links to the videos afterwards as well. So you'll be able to see that in replay. But Tony is going to be on Tuesday, correct? <clears throat> I have to, I'm coming back to this? I'm yeah. just kidding. I'm kidding. I'll be I, on yeah. Tuesday. Tuesday noon, guys. I'll be <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> Tuesday, Tuesday, you're coming She's back. like, what? <laughs> I'm like, oh man, I, I, I laughed. I've told everybody in this group, I'm not kidding you. This morning, we couldn't get the live going on Facebook. Zoom was down. I mean, the whole bit, honestly, I said, I, I told some people the other day, I said, it feels like every morning there's somebody at the end of my bed. I wake up and they holler plot twist. <laughs> Keeps you young, CJ. Keeps you young. I'm telling you. So, Tony, what is your now? You, I don't want you telling people what you're going to tell them at the summit. But what's your summit topic? What are you going to be oh, talking about? Oh, it's going to be awesome. I'm not going to tell them anything, but I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you what you need to do to become a really good pickleball player, like 4.0 level, maybe even better, and what not to do. How about that? I didn't tell them what I'm going to tell them. I just tell them what I'm going to, what I'm going to tell them about. So, <laughs> All right. Awesome. Um, Okay, so you got to you got to tune in for that one. All right, so Tony's going to give us some. So Tony is going to give us some tips, the things we can do today. But before you start with the tips, what is this paddle bouncing, edge bouncing challenge that you? And then I saw the video with Jill that the two of you have now started. <laughs> well, actually, I want to take credit for it. We didn't start it, but I, I kind of picked it up. What happened was we played um, Jill and I again, part of the 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 just the. I mean, we've been really fortunate uh, to find pickleball and also just to be able to grow in it. So last year, we did an RV in 19. We did an RV, but we went to uh, Europe. They had uh, the English Open and the French Open are back-to-back weeks. If you guys ever want to go somewhere cool, Europe has like the, I don't remember the exact order, but it's like the German Open, the Italian Open, the French Open, the, the English Open, and the German Open, something like that, like week to week to week. So you can pick two weekends and do two of them. So we did the English Open and the French Open. So while we were over there, we met a bunch of really cool people from all over there, Finland, uh, England. Uh, I mean, it's, it's really interesting because over there, it's like, you know, like here sometimes we'll travel, like I'll go to Atlanta for a tournament, you know, or I'll go to like whatever, Carolinas for a tournament. Over there, it's like they go from like Finland to France or Finland to England, whatever, you know what I mean? So we saw the same, for instance, the same gentleman from Finland who was in both uh, English and the French Opens. So uh, I, some of the Spanish players I met at the French Open had posted some some challenges, and also I saw uh, Kyle Gates did a, an amazing uh, one. You got if you haven't seen it, you got to check it out. Uh, he basically bounces it, flips the paddle, does all this crazy stuff, and I guarantee you his is not edited. Mine mine is edited. <laughs> his is not edited at all, and uh, so he does this sick thing, and it's just fun. You know, it's just kind of fun. You know, plus I mean, listen, the, the, there's a benefit to it too. If you can bounce it on the edge of your paddle, right? Eye hand coordination, uh, movement of your hand, tracking ball. I mean, all those things. It sounds silly. It's a, it's actually when you get out on the court, you're going to be a better player. I mean, there's a, have you ever seen the the see, have you seen the video? I think uh, Respetsky, Marcin Respetsky did it where he hits it. I think he hits it with like the edge of the 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 bottom of the paddle. So he hits it like this part. Have you seen that? I haven't seen that one. It's no. amazing. He does this thing where he volleys, right? So he does, he's volleying and he, he'll get the paddle and he'll just like bop it from the edge, right? So mm -hmm. you just hit it, it just softly, right? 
And then all of a sudden you turn it to the thing and it's like the, the ball is like this big, you know, because you've been hitting it with nothing. And so this little silly nonsense things is just a really cool way to stay entertained, entertain yourself, try and do something funny and also work on it. I mean, I, I seriously, I mean, I wasn't on it for 14 hours like the video said, but I was, I, Jill and I were doing it and we were, I was, I was like, holy crap, this is not easy. I'm like, I'm, you know, I don't bounce it on the edge. I'm like, okay, I mean, this is not, I, mean, I would never try and do what Kyle did first, where he bounced it, he flipped it, he did it through the legs, he did all this, he bounced it on the edge of the paddle, I mean, on the top of the paddle. I'm like, it's insanity. So the idea was, listen, why don't we like play along with this thing and put it out there? And we've gotten some, some people, like a, a gentleman from France, uh, Sebastian sent us one. Uh, there was uh, uh, Orlena from Minnesota did this thing. It wasn't a paddle thing, but it was like a, uh, like a ball challenge thing it was really cool. So it, the idea is basically, listen, we're all like going stir crazy right now. Let's do some fun. So, and I know you want it. You were like gearbox. I can't. I'm like, I'm not that you can't. I know, no, no edge, right? <laughs> Great technology, but not so good for the edge challenge, right? <laughs> so, so, uh, so what we wanted to do, and I'll, I'll do a video. I don't know if I have time today, but maybe the next couple of days, I'll do a video where I'm going to basically open up the paddle thing and go whatever you want to do. Do something with a pickleball related challenge, bounce it off the edge, flip it around, twirl it in the air, whatever floats your boat. Just do something fun, share it around, let's have a couple of laughs, and also work on the game. So, you know, Tony and I were joking about this, but it, he, it really is true. The more that you can do this, the more paddle control is showing that you, ha that you have. And I remember the first time I saw this, it was an old tournament video. I mean, it was from when Ben Johns and uh, Kyle Yates first started playing and they were playing together. And it was this old crappy video that somebody had posted up on YouTube and it wasn't edited. They just threw the video up there. And during a timeout, the two of them are sitting at the back of the line talking to each other and they're bouncing the balls on the paddle and then they kind of start bouncing it to each other on the on edges the edge, right? on yeah. the edges of the paddle right and you know flipping it around and on and on and you know coming from a golf background <clears throat> when you're working so hard to control right to control the face of something that you're controlling the face of the golf club you're controlling the face of the paddle i'm like wow those two guys really have paddle control <laughs> but yeah it's, it's funny is it like we were in a uh, when we were in, in the French Open, uh, we were fortunate enough to to be able to meet, like, hang out with Arena and Kyle because they were over there playing. We got to play them too, which you know that win is expected. But you know, we had fun. Um, and and Arena and Kyle were just such sports about it. They were just super cool about it. Like Kyle did, you know, his thing. He was putting on a show for the crowd. It was a lot of fun. And Arena was just see so much fun to hang around. Anyway, but I, I found out something. So uh, they do this thing called like um, Hangman. You ever heard about it? Is that one of so their sick this, trick, the sick tricks? Kind of. It's like they'll play, right? And then the, 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 think a hangman, right? So the whole idea, yep. except for the face, the whole idea is to do a hangman. So okay. they hit you in the chest. They hit you in the arm. They hit you in the other arm. They hit you in the leg. I mean, they're actually like, that's how sophisticated it is. <laughs> and I think a lot of it is that they're so, they're so, they're such advanced players, you know, that when they have to play someone like, like me, not that I'm a, I think I'm a decent player, right? But I'm not at their level. And so they're just kind of like, well, how can I make this? Let's spice it up a little bit, you know? So they do stuff like that, you know, edge, hangman, whatever. It's fun. And, and you know what, Tony, you bring up a good point. When you look at some of the professionals out there and, and how generous they are with their time and they're playing with us and 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 we're not playing to that level. They, and they don't get to always play to that level, right? It's not mm -hmm. like they're always together. I mean, yes, some of them live relatively close to each other and there are some in a good community. And, and when they do that, they're gracious. So here's my little, this is my little PSI. Oh, sir. No. Yeah, I did. Well, PSIA is Professional Ski Instructors Association. That's what, which I'm a member of. That's why I came out. It's my PSA, public service announcement. Be gracious when you're playing with people who are at a different level than you are. There is always something that you can do to improve your game, no matter who you're playing with. I agree. And can I give out a, a quick shout out on that? Because I love that. that you point. got it. Excuse me. Um, excuse me. Jesse Simon uh, put out this thing. I don't know if you heard about you heard of eighty ten ten CJ. I hadn't heard of it before. Before yeah. uh, Jesse he put it on his website. That was really interesting. Uh, so the eighty ten ten rule is eighty percent at your level, ten percent above, ten percent below. And it's really important to remember. Uh, you know, don't pull up the ladder, guys. You know, I remember when there was guys here in in our area that Tom and I were able to play with. And they would whoop us. They would just kill us all the time. We couldn't even, they would joke with us. They'd be like, I'll play as long as you want. One guy, he was just, 
ribbing us. But he's like, I'll play as long as you want. You're not going to get a game off of us. And I'm like, oh. and he was right. I'm like, I'm like trying, but I can't. Well, now those guys can't get a game off of us, right? But does that mean we're not going to play with them anymore? Absolutely not. You know, I mean, that's just silly. So, and, and even, even, you know, levels below that. I mean, it's just, I, and that's something, CJ, that just, it really kind of, it's a, it's a, it's a, it just bothers me. It's a peeve of mine is players that'll just say, I, I don't know if you saw it, I wrote this little thing about, um, I told, and, and this is, I, I don't want to get too off topic, right? But this is like, you know, like, what happened was this. So it was a friend of mine, female player, goes to these courts, you know, visiting family, doesn't know the players there. There's like six or seven uh, men there. There's, they're playing, right? But, but there's some that aren't playing. And so she says, you know, can I join you? And they say, what's your level? And she says, well, I'm a three, five. And so they're like, oh, I don't know. And then that's it. Then they just basically ignore her and she leaves and the sour taste around. And this is a person, CJ, who's been playing pickleball for like two, three years, super into the sport, like really, really into the sport and could have hung with these guys. Because these guys, you know, I mean, there's everybody thinks they're a four up. No, you're not. Sorry. But uh, anyway, so she, um, so what I, I wrote this thing and I said, basically, if you're a woman, sorry, and you're traveling, you're a four or five. Somebody says, what's your level? The reason they're asking is they don't want to play with you. So you tell them you're a four or five, they'll let you in their game. Obviously, do it if you if you you've watched them for a little while and you're like, okay, I can hang with these people. I can I know what they're doing. I can play. I'm not gonna be like out, you know, like I'm not gonna really mess up the game. You're a four or five. And what I told them, and I'm, I'm I imagine you do the same thing, CJ. If they ask, I said, listen, if they're like, you're not a four or five, you're like, my coach said I'm a four or five. Who's your coach? <laughs> Tony Roy. Get my email address. Get my phone number. I don't care. Call me up. And hey, she's a four or five. Come over here. Let's play, guy. You know, and that's that drives me insane. So yeah, 80, 10, 10, guys, do it. I absolutely, I, I, I love that. Yes, uh, my coach Tony. That's what I'm going to tell him. It's my coach Tony. Hey, Tony, before, before I get you, you, you get to give somebody some tips on you know what they can do right now we're going to go back one more time to the ball question just in terms of because we got some clarification the cement is polished and really david olive was asking should he use the outdoor ball on cement even though it's polished is there a, and and i think david yeah. missed our answer so david i will tell you this we're not going to go all the way back into the answer but the good news is it's at the beginning of this replay. So you can go back to that. But is there something that you would like to add to that? I would say polished concrete, same as parquet floor. I would treat them the same. Outdoor balls, if you want to use the Pen 40 or the old school Onyx Pure 2, that's fine. You need a ball with a little bit of rubber in it. I would not use a Dura. I would not use a Franklin. Not that I don't love those balls. They're gray balls. I love those balls. But you got to think of the surface you're on. You need a little bit of grit so the balls can catch on them. Um, so that'd be my recommendation. Uh, and George Valentine. How you doing, brother? Cool, cool. So, and I think that's great because he said no, a soft or outdoor ball is what they're saying. Onyx Pure 2 Outdoor and Penhead 40 Outdoor are softer options than some of the other hard outdoor options. I think that kind of gets us back to, unfortunately, I wish there was a great answer. Um, experiment, give it a try, see what you yeah. like. And then you know what, David, after you've done that a little bit too, Tell us. We want to know. That's how everybody kind of learns is by spreading the information. So, okay. All right. So here, I'm putting you on the spot back again. Now we've done the no, hardball. I had a hardball already. Hardball. Give me, oh, a, yeah. give me a softball. Give me a, like a, like a big softball that I can just knock out of the park. Like should players come in on the return of serve? Give me something like that. Should players come in on the return of serve? Yes. Go ahead. Next. <laughs> What was it? I have somebody on my, um, Mark Mazur says, there are two rules in pickleball. Get to the net. Rule number one is get to the net. Rule number two is look at rule number one. <laughs> but I'm going to disagree. Can I disagree? <laughs> you can disagree. <laughs> well, it's not disagree entirely, but you got to get to the net rationally. Rationally. No, Absolutely. Right. So on the return serve, yes, hundred percent. I'm not going to qualify it. I had somebody ask me the question today, like, what if I had a short return? I'm like, you got to get to the net. And yeah. even if you can only get some way up, get some way up and then learn how to like ding quality, whatever, do not let them attack you. Actually, the video I'm analyzing, the, the game two of the match that I already put out there, the play-by-play, -play, it's me. I hit a short return and Josh comes up and just rips a ball at me. You'll see in the video, rips a ball at me. I deserved it. Rips it at me and I lose the point because he just, he, you know, it's no. Deep return, get the line. Let's go. That's it. That's simple. Yeah. So, 
And, uh, and you know what, we're going to agree on that. And I don't think you, I think there are very, there are some things that are just totally non-controversial and, mm -hmm. and pickable. And that is when you are the returner, when you are the person who is receiving the serve, you hit that ball and you get your butt to the net as fast as your legs are going to carry you, period. Um, don't waste and if you need more time, lob it throw it up to the sky. I don't care. It's not a, you don't have to hit a pretty ball and you're not going to win the point of the return of serve. I hate that when people are like, not hate it, hates, hates, sorry, take it back. Hates too strong with the term. I strongly recommend not trying to win the shot or win the point on a return of serve. Not going to happen. Forget about it. You, what you want to do is get to the Novali zone. How do you do that? Moon ball. I don't care. Send it up to Mars, get up to the Novali zone. It doesn't matter. You got, you know, one good knee, you get up there, you ball. Break, you get up to the Novali zone. That's it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. All right. You're back on the spot. You gave some good stuff on the return to surf, but you know, one of the things we've been really kind of focusing these, the live shows on, and we're going to focus the summit on those things too, or what are some of the things that people could be doing today right now to help them be better players when we get back on the pickleball court? So that's oh. your, that's your softball. Thank you. That's an easy one. I like that. All right. All right. Thank you, CJ. <laughs> Thank you, CJ. Back to you. Just kidding. All right. So here we go. So there's a few things you guys can do. One is there's a ton of indoor stuff you can do. I know it's, it'll seem boring. It'll seem like overly simplistic. It'll seem whatever. Mirror drills. We have a couple of videos. Simone just put a video up today on drills she's doing out by her pool. I don't know what happens. Now, Simone's not going to miss, right? So she's hitting balls against the wall. She's not going to miss any of them. The rest of us are fishing balls out of the pool. That's fine. Do her drills. They're awesome. I think uh, Jesse's, uh, Jesse just put one up. Uh, I'm sure, CJ, you have some, whatever. The point is this. Wall drills, mirror drills. Guys, I'm going to say that, I don't know how many people are watching this thing right now, but I'm going to say like 90% of you guys, no offense to anybody, over swings, meaning you have too much back swing. So you're pulling the paddle back behind the plane of your body. I don't know if you can see it here, but this is my body. This is the plane of my body. I'm done. This, no bueno. This, bueno, no bueno, bueno, right? So you do wall drills. What you do is, or, or mirror drills, I'm sorry. And or name a mirror. You can do it against, you can do it in a linear. You stand there and you just, just go like this with a paddle. Just go like this with a paddle over and over again. Now, whenever this thing passes, a week, two weeks, whatever it is, I, I don't want to predict, but whatever it is, right? And now you get on the court. What are you doing? Bam, putting weight, bam, putting weight, bam, putting weight. Now you're avoiding this ridiculous backswing that's totally necessary and pickable. That's one thing that's super important you can do. The other thing you can do, is you can you can help um, repair. You can do some maintenance, guys. Uh, everybody's playing pickleball all the time. We're running around like crazy. We don't repair. I know CJ does. The, CJ is like has a niche on the 50 plus guys. You know, join CJ's channel if you're not already on there. Get on there. Uh, we have a few things. We did one on on uh, the elbow, strengthening the forearm. Uh, I thought I had published it, but I guess I didn't. I did one on the shoulder, but I haven't published it yet, so I gotta do that one. So I did one on the shoulder rotator cuff stuff, super important. Again, CJ's got some really good stuff on there and just body maintenance. Let's do some body repair. Let's do some body maintenance. Let's do some, some strengthening of those areas. If you strengthen this forearm, I'm doing the left, but the right, whatever, strengthen your arm, strengthen that arm area. The tennis elbow, golf wearable thing, I, and CJ, I got, I, I'm not a golfer. I got golfers over. That thing's awful. Oh, my God. I had tennis elbow before. Then I got golfers over. I was like, this is worse than tennis elbow. And so strengthening this area, super important. You can do that now. Um, so I think mirror drills, uh, wall, uh, wall drills, wall drills. Also, if you have a, say you live in a, a house with a basement or garage or someplace that you can do some stuff, awesome stuff. Uh, we have a video on it. Again, there's a lot of videos out there on it. Just get out there. Just do some simple stuff, guys. It'll, it'll pay dividends. Like you want to make believe how good you become when you go out there in two weeks or whenever it is. Um, uh, so that's really important. Repair is really important. The other thing, guys, is the mental part of the game, in other words. And I'm not talking about, like, you know, I mean, it's good, too. You want to read stuff on, like, how to get in the zone and all that. That's fine. Good stuff. But I'm talking about, do I understand this game? Like, like CJ and I just said, you got to get up to the no-line zone. Okay? So, to CJ and I, we're talking, like, kindergarten stuff, right? We're talking, like, first grade, not whatever. I mean, it's not even what we're talking about, right? Guys, I watch players play. I go out. I, I love going out to, to – I go to open play all the time. I see what's going on out there. There's just a gazillion players, gazillion, not getting up to the no volley zone. You just don't get up to the no volley zone. And it's it's crazy that you don't get up to the no volley zone. So watch some of, again, we have some good videos on that. 
Joe Baker has going to be in there. I'm sure CJ has going to be in there. Get on there. Watch some videos. Learn some stuff. Get in there and understand how the game is played so that when you go out and play, you're like, okay, I'm going to do the right thing. So those are, I think those are three things, right? Repairs, some drills that you can do in-house. And all, uh, the repairs and drills, kind of in between is the exercises. You can do some, some movement stuff where you basically learn how to move. Uh, some of the videos we did on the mirror drills incorporate a little bit of that. Like, like how do I move and hit with my body in control? That kind of stuff. Super important, guys. Listen, like I, I'm going to give a props to Sarah Ansbury because she does some, some really good videos on this stuff. Body control, guys, super important. And you, you don't see a perfect player like Sarah Ansbury running out there, hitting balls like this, running the power. No, you see Sarah Ansbury get in position, hit a nice ball. Get in position, hit a nice ball. So why not you? You can do it. So that's it. Cool. Those are, uh, Tony, those are a lot of great resources. Um, I do have, you brought up a couple of thoughts while you were doing this. I, I got a fantastic freebie for all of you. Um, I, I happen to love the Peloton. And, and I can tell you there are a few things that have made me more fit than the Peloton, uh, but you may not know this. You, a number one, you don't need a bike. Uh, they have yoga, strength training, meditation classes. And I just saw today that Peloton Digital, which you can get streamed to your phone, you can put it on your smart TV. They right now are giving you 90 days for free. <laughs> So I'm not sponsored by Peloton, anything else. I just have to tell you, I'm a fan of Peloton. Um, and the other thing I like about, cause you talked about mental um, things, the coaches on Peloton, in fact, we were having to talk about this earlier cause Brandon Swanson, who's the paddle geek. Do you know Brandon? Yeah. Yep. I mean, so, that person, I know who he is. I don't, I don't know like. But you know who he is. Yes. Brandon and I were talking about this earlier while I was trying to get that Facebook Live going. Um, and, and we will have a video up on Facebook a little bit later after I get it edited because we went ahead and recorded it. But we were talking about this and he's a, he had just gotten off the Peloton bike. And uh, one of the things that makes Peloton so attractive is it has a lot of those same community feelings like you get inside of Pickleball. And the instructors there, you talked about that mental part from a motivation part. I got to tell you, they have like, bad you know they have like phds in pushing you to the next level um i always tell the story i was at the end of a really really tough cycling workout and i work out super super hard and i was at the end of this tough cycling like workout i had about four minutes to go there was one more push in this workout and the instructor looks at me and she says to me she well you know looks at me on the screen and she says and you know what? I know right now that you're just tempted just to ride this <laughs> right on out, just the way you're doing things. But she said, you're not average. You're going to get up there and you're going to push yourself. And I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> CJ's not average, <laughs> CJ. Let's go. <laughs> um, so there's a, there's a nice freebie resource. I will, I, I will tell you this, CJ, that I listen to those Peloton commercials that come on a Pandora or whatever, I, Spotify, I can't remember. And I'm just like, I listen to them. I'm like, where's my bike? I got to get on my bike. I got to go. I'm like, what's going on? They get in your head, man. It's crazy. Um, one of the things I do, like over on my Facebook page, I take some of the Peloton instructor quotes and I put them with a pickleball background. And, and I credit the instructors. I yeah. credit the, the I credit the Peloton instructors, um, but then I put them on my Facebook page. So, and by the way, I would now I have some questions coming your way. But uh, speaking of which, I know that some of you have asked, how can you support the creators? Uh, and and thank you so much. We really appreciate that. The biggest way that you can support us is is like our stuff. Go to you know go over to if you are not subscribed to Tony's channel, please go subscribe to Tony's channel. If you're not subscribed to my channel, subscribe to my channel. I promise you're not getting tons of like spam from YouTube or anything like that. Um, but that's in part how we make some com compensation. Uh, go on over to Facebook. Please do the same thing over on Facebook. But if you like our stuff, if you comment, if you share it, and uh, if you tell us, and you know, another thing, we we do a lot of analytics and try and figure out what you like. Uh, but but it's sometimes it's still just guessing tell us what you'd like and what you'd like to see more of and what you'd like to see less of that's that those are things that really help us make the best stuff for you can i second that emotion cj because i'll tell you this the biggest thing for me I'm, I'm trying to get people and we're trying to figure out how to reach more people sharing guys um you know uh, you know we uh, C, cj's cj's channel you know we track this kind of those cj's channel is a little bit bigger than our channel right in terms of 
and subscribers. So I know that that we reach something like 11,000 and change subscribers. CJ reaches something like 14,000, some number like that, right? So, so subscribers, obviously, if you're subscribed to our channel, then you're getting our stuff. There's a, it's just like, I, I don't know if 3 million is the right number. I'm not, I'm not convinced on that. I think it's big, but I don't know what the number is, but it's a big number. But whatever it is, right? It's more than 11,000 or 14,000, no matter what. It's more than 15 or 16 prime time has. Guys, if you, if you see something and you're like, yeah, this is good, share it. Share it with your friends. And the other thing is this, so that, that what I try and tell people is there are, you have, you, there's people in your circle, right, of, of, of whether it's family or friends or whatever, that don't know pickleball yet. And it sucks that they don't know pickleball. Pickleball is an amazing sport, guys. And I'm not saying this because I have into pickle. I liked pickleball for three years before I started into pickles. I had nothing to do with into pickle. Pickleball is an amazing sport, guys, for older people, younger people. It's an amazing sport for people that are disabled. It's an amazing sport for people who have PTSD. Guys, I mean, it sounds like, like I'm cuckoo, right? A little bit, right? This is an amazing sport, guys. And I come from four years of playing tennis. And, and again, nothing against golf, tennis, or other activities. If that's your thing, God bless you. But Pickleball is accessible to so many more people in these other sports. And so maybe you touch somebody and you, you send it out there and they see a video by CJ talking about something and they're like, well, I'm 50 plus. Well, I want to know more about this. And they click on it. And next thing you know, six months later, they're playing pickleball and now they're an addict like us. I'm just telling you guys, sharing. I love the other stuff too, but sharing number one. to me. Perfect. You got it. All right. There's some questions coming this way and some of these you need to be short and brief on because oh, there's no. there are several questions coming your way and <laughs> we've, we've already been at this for 40 minutes so oh no okay all right so this is coming from stan brown are you, you still stan? are you still wearing those groovy pants <laughs> no oh okay I I'm, I, wearing, I'm wearing shorts <laughs> you saw my pajamas that i did the video way stan oh, wearing shorts. okay okay come on all i'm right. in florida give me a break and you know what, Stan, if you share some videos, maybe he'll do some new videos in some of those groovy pants. There we I go. I have another set I can use if you beat me, Dan. Stan, I'm sorry. I'll beat you, Stan, if you beat me. Let's see. Okay. I don't know who this one came from, but <laughs> how is it? Now, he said, how is it to play against Kyle Yates? I was going to say, how is it to get beat on by Kyle Yates? Yeah. Go right ahead. Second, 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 second time. First time. I played, uh, Tom and I played against uh, Kyle and Aspen just back in the day in Atlanta. And we, I, I'm pretty sure the score was 0-0, zero, zero, I think. I'm 95% sure it was 0-0, zero, zero. it was awful. And then against Arena, I, we might have scored three or four points. It was super nice, it was it was super friendly, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it's just, you know, they're they're doing their thing. It was, it was fantastic. Oh, awesome, awesome. Okay, now these are coming from Waylon Fong. He's got a couple of questions about your trip abroad. So I'm gonna put them all together, all right? The first one is, are 4 players <laughs> different throughout the United States and abroad? And then the second one was, how was it for you to play in another country for you and for Jill? Awesome, okay, so 4 yes, there are some differences. I think the, the biggest difference is um, non, how do I say this, non, let's say serious tournament, and, and I'm gonna explain in a second. I can't think of another word right now. Non-serious tournament rated and not, meaning, um, and there's different types of tournaments. So like if you played 4-0 at the US Open at Nationals, at a big regional, at the Texas Open, it's, you know, at the Kalamazoo, something like that, then that's 4-0. In other words, you know, that's what you're playing. Um, there's a lot of players out there that are like 4-0, um, aren't 4-0, again, no offense to anybody, but you're not 4-0. Um, and again, I don't mean to insult anybody. I'm not trying to denigrate anybody it's just you know numbers are just a matter of the let us know kind of where everybody's at um i would say this though don't stress about i don't think people should stress about ratings unless you're entering a tournament i had a, a friend ask me recently you know what's my rating and i said are you playing a tournament and he said no i just curious and i said then don't worry about it i said worry about getting in the wally zone worry about this worry, you know worry about the things the things we're going to talk about on tuesday at 12. um so you know so i think ratings are overrated uh, uh it, you know i think they're overrated anyway um in so don't worry too much about that in terms of uh playing abroad it was amazing uh i think you know the u.s obviously you know we're ahead if you will in terms of uh uh you know generally speaking in terms of our play just because we've been playing longer uh i think overseas what i'm seeing is a lot of energy there's really what's fascinating i don't know if you know the cd or not but in france 
um, pickleball is actually in Fayence, which is now my niece. They don't have any pickleball in the in Paris in the big city. So I, I really, I, you know, I should have asked. I didn't. How that happened? That it started in this really small town up in a mountaintop in in southern France. But that's where they play pickleball, and they're like crazy for pickleball. I mean, they play pickleball on this court that you'd be like, I'm not playing on that court. They play on that court because uh, they're into pickleball. So, and they run the French Open. They do an amazing job. They're really nice people, and so uh, really good energy overseas. Uh, some good players that are just going to get better. Uh, and I, I forgot who it was. Somebody said to me, I don't remember where it came, but that you know, basically, you know, maybe five years from now. Uh, we're not sure that the best players are going to be in the U.S. I haven't played in China. I haven't played in India yet. Uh, but I think uh, – watch out, guys. That's what I think. So, anyway. You know, and, and I'm going to have to second that. I'm not sure the best players will be in the U.S., especially when you look at the crossover skills coming from badminton mm -hmm. and ping pong. Yeah, exactly. um, it, when you – you know, most of our really good players right now, their crossover skill are racket sports being back uh, – being racquetball and or tennis. Yep. And, and, and I'm not I, – I just think there, there are different – techniques and skills that you've built from those sports that are relevant in ping pong or in in pickleball and to me ping pong and badminton are kind of unique i agree and, and if you if you've never seen henry a, sorry but, if you've never seen henry winardo play henry with a d in it winardo he's a badminton champ from i think from i don't say from indonesia i don't know sure if you've yes. never seen him play you got to see his style of play i was watching him play one time and actually kyle was there and Kyle and I can't remember who else he was talking to. You know, pro high level players were watching him play from this sideline, and they were like, "What's he gonna do? Nobody can figure out what he's gonna do with the ball." It's an amazing skill, guys. And we're and I don't know, I don't know if everybody knows this, but I mean, pickleball is badminton. It's just it's on a badminton court. It's just a different. You know, we lowered the net and we changed the rules. Some we're playing yeah. badminton, guys. So yeah, I, I will tell you, I I went to a tournament um, several years ago up in. Uh, right in between um, Portland and Seattle, right? Birthplace of pickleball. So there are people mm -hmm. who have been playing pickleball there for like <laughs> ever, right? I mean, there are some phenomenal pickleball players that you have never, ever heard of. And one of the things that amazed me, there were some players up there that um, came from ping pong and I, it's like watching them move from a forehand to a backhand. It was like, <laughs> you know, how fast have you ever seen, go? Have, you ever seen, uh, have you ever seen what Zabinden does? I think it's pronounced right. Raphael Zabinden, when they hit a ball towards him. Have I haven't seen, seen that. Ball? Oh my, I'll see if I can, I send it to you. He basically, the ball comes towards, like it's coming up <laughs> towards his face, right? And so most mm -hmm. of us would just, if we're right-handed, we just defend like this, right? He somehow, I don't know how he does it, but he ducks out of the way, comes around, and just smashes it at them. And I'm not 100% sure, but I think he's a, I think ping pong's this thing. But I was like, I saw that play and I was like, what is this guy doing? But it was, a, it was amazing. And he's playing like, he's not playing me. He's playing like, I don't know, he's playing Stone or somebody like that, some really good players. And I was like, what? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it, I, I will tell you, it's, it's pretty crazy. There are some really good players out there that you have never, ever, and probably will never heard of, hear of. I, re, I remember uh, one of the gals up at this tournament, they kind of took me under their wing and they said to me is, is uh, uh, she, she, she pulled me over. She said, if you really want to learn something, you need to come watch this guy. He's like one of the legends of the game. And I was really new to pickleball and, you know, I was absorbing it all in and I forget it. His first name was Billy. He's in the pickleball hall of fame. I didn't know who I can, I'm not thinking of his last name right now. Um, but I watched this guy and he had some at that time, right. He was having some physical challenges. I mean, there were some, you know, things that were happening to his body. I got to tell you, he's an amazing player, even with all of the things he was going through. It's like, could you possibly hit the ball anymore on the sweet spot? I, I well, we, we have, there's two guys, I'm gonna shout out two guys here in, in our area, a guy named Mon and a guy named Tyson. No one knows who these guys are outside of our area. And Mon travels a little bit. So they know him a little bit outside. They don't play tournaments because they can't. Mon's got a, Mon's got a young family and Tyson is a tennis pro. So he, work during the weekend so outside of but here we know mom and we know tyson so you know it's exactly the same thing i mean now there is everybody has their, their areas of people that just they love pickleball they just don't play tournaments with you you know exactly 
So we're starting to wind this down. If you have a question, please go ahead and still put the questions in, but we've got just a couple of more. Um, I'm going to uh, preface this by saying Dale, and Dale's one of our moderators today. Dale is a pickleball ambassador out in Massachusetts. And she started, she actually, it's out, so it's up on Google. It's a Google Doc. And what she is trying to get is she is trying to get um, all the different ideas for people to do things off the court while we're away from the courts right now, all in one place. So she's, this Google doc is open and you can go in and you can put your suggestions in there. And then she's put that document in the chat. But one of the things that she said is, um, she said, uh, this is to you, Tony. Thanks for the, for the in, thanks for the indoor for a rainy day series. Have added them to my practice safe pickleball document, along with links from Sarah Ansbury. Please encourage viewers to share their ideas on this collaborative document. Um, so yeah, so make sure you take a look at that because I know, you know, a lot of times you got some great ideas that maybe never make it to a video for one reason or the other, right? I will. And I, I, we have some <laughs> folks that are helping us. Uh... We started this advisor group uh, and we've had some really good feedback from people. So I'm going to uh, try and get some of our folks to help out with that. Cause you know how it is, CJ. I mean, we're, we're trying to create content and get it out there. And it's like, like today I was doing Instagram and I'm terrible at Instagram and I'm just, but I'm trying to get the word out, you know, and it's just, it's a lot of work. Go ahead. You know, thank you for what you, thank you for your help, Dale. Appreciate it. Um, Waylon's got two more questions. I'm going to throw this one out first. Tony, why does Wyatt Stone put his hand on his hip when dinking? Uh, that's something that some players do. I've seen it. Uh, there's a friend of mine, Seth, from uh, South Florida that does the same thing. He basically puts his offhand on his hip. It just helps him stabilize. I think it's a stylistic thing. I think that, like CJ and I were saying earlier, like getting up to the Nawali zone, got to do it on the return to serve. That's a, <laughs> indisputable. Where you put your offhand, a million different conversations about that. You know, you want to play like, uh, like the Newmans do, two hands. I think that's a good idea. Uh, more of the uh, more players and more I would say more female players are starting to use the offhand not just to rip balls but just to control the paddle which is like, I'm trying to do it more I actually saw I don't know this is kind of interesting so uh, Barry Waddell is starting to use the offhand on forehand dinks so I'll let you process that and we'll talk about it later but that's fascinating uh, so you know where you put your offhand it's it's if for Wyatt that works for him that's awesome more power to him uh, it wouldn't, I don't think that would work for my style of play, but you know, I think it's just a stylistic thing. It also, st I'm sorry, 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 CJ, not stylistic. It's how he approaches the offhand. So I don't want to say he's not doing it for style points. I, I didn't, I want to clarify that. Sorry. Well, and, and something I'd like to throw in there too, is just another consideration is, uh, where that offhand goes a lot of times can, um, it's the balancing hand, right? <laughs> so it's yeah. not, it's not just for it's it, yes, it's there to stabilize a paddle. It's there to do a variety of other things, but you have to also be able to maintain balance with that hand. Um, so that could potentially be it because depending upon sure. our size, we're all going to balance differently. I mean, if you think about it, like as a, as a tennis player, I use my offhand or this my offhand. My offhand, I pull it like, like you know, I'll, I'll hit and I pull away. That's how a tennis player does it. But I was thinking like if you were like a fencer, like if you watch fencing, they put their hand on the, I think they put their hand on the hip and then they fence with the other arm so the hand balances. So yeah, it's yeah. just a way of approaching it. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, Waylon answers, asks this one as well, is CJ is, CJ is playing seven days a week worse for one's game. CJ's belief is doing seven days of anything is worse for whatever you're trying to get better at. Uh, our bodies need rest. Our bodies need to recoup. I will tell you this, when I, the reason that we're here is uh, I'm, I was a health and wellness coach for a long period of time. As you know, I was also a golf pro, never had a gaze of golfer's elbow until I started playing pickleball. Uh, so it was the bad advice I was getting and the, and the, the golfer's elbow that got me started uh, on the YouTube channel. So uh, you need to take care of your body. Your body needs rest. You need time away from the court. You need to do stretching. Your mind needs it too. It's not just about your body. Your mind needs to have it too. So uh, yeah, I think seven days a week is probably not. I second that. Not good. All right, we have two more questions, and then we're going to wrap it up. Um, do you have any videos of the guy Henry you mentioned? I'm Arlene's friend. She has good things to say about you, Tony. Hello, Arlene's friend. Hello, Arlene. That's Smash Beat community up there. Uh, on um, 
uh, no, I, I don't have any videos of him. I, I would just start Henry Winardo, W-I-N-A-R-T-O. I'm sure there's something on, on YouTube out there, so. There's a bunch on there. And then, oh, okay, it was, yes. Oh, and, and that was G and G and M Lawrence. That's who it was, who was asking that question. I just wanted to okay. make sure Hello. that we got the name right. So uh, we are going to uh, wrap this up for today. Please join us at the summit. Uh, registration link is in, the, uh, is in the chat. It's at the very top of the chat. It's also going to be in the show notes at the bottom. Get registered for the summit. You're going to get an agenda right away. Tony is going to be, what are you telling us again? I know you're telling us on Tuesday. What, what are you going to make us on Tuesday? Um, I'm, I'm looking for a promise. Best, the best player you can be and stuff that you can just go like, forget about it. <laughs> hey, with a promise like that, that's awesome. Thank you all for being here. It's a special shout out to Dale and Christy for managing the chat. You ladies are awesome. And you know how I always end my videos. Come back tomorrow because together we can train smart, live bold, and age well. Bye, everybody. And